All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think I finished off at Bible AV8 yesterday for Bible stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and catch up from yesterday. Maybe do a couple, maybe one or two Bibles today. I got to get myself doing this in a timely manner. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Bible AV9, just want to double check. Four, six, eight, nine, so to chapter 31. Okay. So chapter 31 is there. So 23 is where I'll start. Exodus 23. You must not spread a report that is not true. Do not cooperate with a wicked one by becoming a malicious witness. You must not follow after the crowd to do evil, and you must not pervert justice by giving testimony to go along with the crowd. You must show impartiality in the dispute of a poor person. If you come upon your enemy's bull or his donkey straying, you must return, re return it to him. If you see that the donkey of someone who hates you has fallen under its load, you must not ignore it and leave. You must help him release the animal. You are not to pervert the judgment of the poor one among you in his legal case. Have nothing to do with a false accusation and do not kill the innocent and the righteous. For I will not declare the wicked one righteous. You will not accept a bribe for the bribe blinds clear sighted men and can distort the words of righteous men. You must not oppress a foreign resident. You know how it feels to be a foreigner because you were foreign residents in the land of Egypt. You are to sow your land with seed and gather its produce for six years. But the seventh year, you should leave it uncultivated and let it lie fallow. And the poor among your people will eat of it. And what they leave, the wild animals of the field will eat. That is what you should do with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days you are to do your work. But on the seventh day, you are to cease from your labor in order that your bull and your donkey may rest and the son of your slave girl and foreign resident may refresh themselves. You must be careful to do all that I have said to you, and you must not mention the names of other gods. They should not be heard on your lips. Three times a year, you are to celebrate a festival to me. You will observe the festival of unleavened bread. You will eat unleavened bread for seven days, just as I have commanded you at the appointed time and the month of Abib. For at that time, you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Also, you are to observe the festival of harvest of the first ripe fruits of your labors, of what you sow in the field, and the festival of ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in from the field the results of your labors. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the true Lord Jehovah. You must not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, and the sacrifices of fat offered at my festivals should not stay overnight until the morning. You are to bring the best of the first ripe fruits of your ground to the house of Jehovah your God. You must not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. <clears throat> I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you on the way to bring you into the place that I have prepared. Pay attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, because my name is in him. However, if you strictly obey his voice and do all that I say, I will show hostility to your enemies and oppose those who oppose you. For my angel will go ahead of you and will bring you to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will annihilate them. You must not bow down to their gods or be persuaded to serve them, and you must not imitate their practices. Instead, you must demolish them and smash their sacred pillars. You must serve Jehovah your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. I will remove sickness from among you. The women in your land will not suffer a miscarriage or be barren, and I will give you a full lifespan. <clears throat> I will send the fear of me ahead of you, and I will throw into confusion all the people you encounter, and I will cause all your enemies to flee from you in defeat. 
I will send the feeling of dejection ahead of you, and it will drive the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites out from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, so that the land does not become desolate and the wild animals of the field multiply against you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you become fruitful and take possession of the land. I will see, set your boundary from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the river, for I will give the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you will drive them out from before you. You must not make a covenant with them or their gods. They should do not dwell in your land so that they may not cause you to sin against me. If you should serve their gods, it would surely become a snare to you. Exodus 24. Then he said to Moses, Go up to Jehovah, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and bow down from a distance. Moses should approach Jehovah by himself, but the others should not approach, and the people should not go up with him. Then Moses came and related to the people all the words of Jehovah and the judicial decisions, and all the people answered with one voice, all the words that Jehovah has spoken, we are willing to do. So Moses wrote down all the words of Jehovah. Then he got up early in the morning and built at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. After that, he sent young Israelite men and they offered up burnt offerings and sacrificed bulls as communion sacrifices to Jehovah. Then Moses took half of the blood and to put it in bowls, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it aloud to the people. And they said, All that Jehovah has spoken we are willing to do, and we will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant that Jehovah has made with you in harmony with all these words. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders went up, of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was what seemed like a sapphire pavement, and it was as pure as the heavens themselves. He did not harm the distinguished men of Israel, and they saw a vision of the true God and ate and drank. Jehovah now said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay there. I will give you the, the stone tablets with the law and the commandment that I will uh, write for their instruction. So Moses got up with his attendant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of the true God. But to the elders, he, he had said, Wait here for us until we return to you. You have Aaron and Hur with you. Whoever has a legal case may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain where the, while the cloud was covering it. Jehovah's glory remained on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses from, amidst, from the midst of the cloud. To the Israelites who were watching, the appearance of Jehovah's glory was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop. Moses then entered into the cloud and went up the mountainside. And Moses stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 25. Jehovah then said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to take up a contribution for me. From every person whose heart moves him, you are to take up my contribution. This is the contribution that you are to accept from them. Gold, silver, copper, blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, seal skins, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, balsam for the anointing oil, and for the perfumed incense, and onyx stones and other stones to be set in the ephod and the breastpiece. They are to make a sanctuary for me, and I will reside among them. You are to make it a tabernacle and all its furnishings, following exactly the pattern that I am showing you. They are to make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide and a cubit and a half high. Then you will overlay it with pure gold. Inside and outside you are to overlay it, and you are to make a border of gold all around it. And you will cast four rings of gold for it and detach them above its four feet with two rings on one side and two rings on the other side. And you will make piece, poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You will put the poles through the rings on the sides of the, the ark in order to carry the ark with them. The poles will stay in the rings of the ark. They are not to be removed from it. You will place in the ark of the testimony that I will give you. 
You will make a cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. You are to make two cherubs of gold. You will make them of hammered work on the two ends of the cover. Make the cherubs on the two ends, one cherub on each end of the cover. The cherubs are to spread out their two wings upward, overshadowing the cover with their wings, and they will face each other. The faces of the cherubs will be turned toward the cover. You will put the cover on the ark, and in the ark you will place the testimony that I will give you. I will present myself to you there and speak with you from above the cover. From between the two cherubs that are on the ark of the testimony, I will make known to you all that I will command you for the Israelites. You will also make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long and a cubit wide and a cubit and a half high. You will overlay it with pure gold and make a golden border around it. You will make a rim around it, a handbreadth wide and a border of gold to go around the rim. You will make it four rings of gold. You will make for it four rings of gold and place the rings on the four corners where the four legs are attached. The rings are to be close to the rim as holders for the poles for carrying the table. You will make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold and carry the table with them. You will also make its dishes, its cups, and its pitchers and its bowls from which they will pour drink offerings. You are to make them out of pure gold, and you will put the showbread on the table before me constantly. You will make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand is to be made of hammered work. Its base, its stem, its branches, its cups, its knobs, and its blossoms will be one piece. And six branches will extend out from the sides of the lampstand, three branches from one side and three branches from the other side. Three cups shaped like almond flowers will be on the one set of branches with knobs and blossoms alternating and three cups shaped like almond flowers on the other set of branches with knobs and blossoms alternating. This is how the six branches will extend out from the stem of the lampstand. On the stem of the lampstand are four cups shaped like almond flowers with its knobs and its blossoms alternating. A knob will be under the first two branches that extend out of the stem, and a knob under the next two branches, and a knob under the next two branches, for the six branches extending out from the stem. The knobs and the branches and the whole lampstand are to be be one piece of pure hammered gold. You will make seven lamps, lamps for it, and when the lamps are lit, they will shine on the area in front of it. Its snuffers and its fire holders are to be a pure gold. It should be made along with these utensils from a talent of pure gold. See that you make them after their pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. Oops. Exodus 26. You are to make the tabernacle with ten tent cloths of fine twisted linen, blue thread, purple wool, and scarlet material. You are to make them with embroidered cherub designs. Each tent cloth will be 28 cubits long, and four cubits wide. All the tent cloths are to be be the same size. Five tent cloths are to be joined one to another to form a series, and the other five tent cloths will be joined in a series. You will make loops of blue thread on the edge of the one tent cloth at the end of the series, and you are to do the same on the outermost edge of the other set where it will join. You will make 50 loops on the one tent cloth and 50 loops on the edge of the other tent cloth so that they will be opposite each other where they join. You are to make 50 gold clasps and join the tent cloths together with the clasps, and the tabernacle will form one unit. You will also make cloths of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle. You will make 11 tent cloths. Each tent cloth will be 30 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. All 11 cloths are to, be the, are to be the same size. You are to join five of the tent cloths together and join the other six tent cloths together. And you are to fold over the, t- the sixth tent cloth at the front of the tent. And you are to make 50 loops on the edge of the one tent cloth, the outermost one in the series. And 50 loops on the edge of the tent cloth at the outer other place where they join. You are to make 50 copper clasps and put the clasps in the loops and join the tent together and it will become one unit. The remaining part of the tent cloths will serve as an overhanging. Half of the tent cloth that remains will hang over the back of the tabernacle. The remaining length of the cloths of the tent will serve as an overhanging for the tabernacle by one cubit on each side in order to cover it. You will also make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, over that a covering of seal skins. You will make a panel, make the panel frames for the tabernacle out of acacia wood standing upright. 
Each panel frame is to be 10 cubits high and a cubit and a half wide. Each panel frame has two tenons, joins to each other. That is how you should make all the panel frames of the tabernacle. You are to make 20 panel frames for the south side of the tabernacle facing south. You will make 40 silver socket pedestals under the 20 panel frames, <clears throat> two socket pedestals under the one panel frame for its two tenons, and two socket pedestals under each following panel frame for its two tenons. <clears throat> for the other side of the tabernacle, the north side, make 20 panel frames and there 40 silver socket pedestals, two socket pedestals under one panel frame and two socket pedestals under each following panel frame. For the rear section of the tabernacle to the west, you will make six panel frames. You will make two panel frames to serve as the two rear corner posts of the tabernacle. They should be doubled from the bottom to the top up to the first ring. This should be done for both of them, and they will form the two corner posts. And there will be eight panel frames, and there are 16 silver socket pedestals, two socket pedestals under the one panel frame, and two socket pedestals under each following panel frame. You will make bars of acacia wood, five for the panel frames of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the panel frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the panel frames of the side of the tabernacle to the west for the rear section. The middle, the middle bar that runs along the center of the panel frame should extend from end to end. You will overlay the panel frames with gold, and you will make their rings of gold as holders for, their bar, for the bars, and you will overlay the bars with gold. You must set up the tabernacle according to its plan and that you were shown in the mountain. You are to make a curtain of blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. It will be made with cherubs embroidered on it. You will hang it on four pillars of acacia wood with gold, acacia overlaid with gold. Their hooks are to be of gold. The pillars are set on four socket pedestals of silver. You will hang the curtain under the clasps and bring the Ark of the Testimony there within the curtain. The curtain will make a division for you between the holy and the most holy. You will put the, you must put the cover on the Ark of the Testimony in the most holy. You will place the table outside the curtain with the lampstand opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and the table you will put on the north side. You will make a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue, thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen woven together. You will make five pillars of acacia for the screen and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks are to be of gold and you will cast five socket pedestals of copper for them. All right, one sec. Got a little heartburn rolling. Water break. Wait a second, I need to double check. 31, that's right. Exodus 27. You will make the altar of acacia wood. It will be five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar should be square and three cubits high. You will make horns on its four corners. The horns will be part of the altar, and you will overlay the altar with copper. You will make buckets for clearing away its ashes, along with shovels, bowls, forks, and fire holders, and you will make all its utensils of copper. You will make a grating for the altar, a network of copper, and on the network, four rings of copper at its four corners. You will, you will set it down below the rim of the altar, and the network will extend partway down into the altar. You will make poles of acacia wood for the altar and overlay them with copper. The poles will be inserted into the rings so that the poles are on the two sides of the altar when it is carried. <clears throat> you must, you will make the altar in the form of a hollow chest of planks. It should be made just as he showed you on the mountain. You will make the courtyard of the tabernacle. For the south side facing the south, the courtyard will have hanging curtains of fine twisted linen, 100 cubits long for the one side. It will have 20 pillars with 20 copper socket pedestals. The hooks of the pillars and their connectors are of silver. The hanging curtains for the north side will also be 100 cubits long, along with its 20 pillars and their 20 copper socket pedestals with silver hooks and connectors for the pillars. There are to be hanging curtains on the west side for 50 cubits across the width of the courtyard with 10 pillars and 10 socket pedestals. The width of the courtyard on the east side toward the sunrise is 50 cubits. 
There will there there will be fifteen cubits of hanging curtains on the one side with three pillars and three socket pedestals. And for the other side, there will be 15 cubits of hanging curtains with three pillar, three pillars and three socket pedestals. The entrance of the courtyard should have a screen 20 cubits long made of blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen woven together with four pillars and their four socket pedestals. All the pillars surrounding the courtyard will have silver fasteners and silver hooks, but their socket pedestals will be of copper. The courtyard is to be of 100 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 50 cubit, 5 cubits high made from fine twisted linen and it should have copper socket pedestals. All the utensils and the items used in the service of the tabernacle as well as its tent pins and all the pins of the courtyard are to be of copper. You are to command the Israelites to bring you pure beaten olive oil for the lighting in order to keep the lamps burning constantly. In the tent of meeting, outside the curtain that is near the, uh, near the testimony, Aaron and his sons will arrange to keep the lamps lit from evening until morning before Jehovah. It is a lasting statute for all their generations to be carried out by the Israelites. Exodus 28. You are to summon from the Israelites your brother Aaron along with his sons so that he may serve as priest to me. Aaron, along with Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron. You are to make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and beauty. You are to speak to all those who are skillful, those whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, and they will make Aaron's garments for his sanctification, so that he may serve as priest to me. These are the garments that they will make, a breastpiece, an ephod, a sleeveless coat, a checkered robe, a turban, and a sash. They will make these holy garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so that he may serve as priest to me. Pause for one sec. Oops. I need a little heartburn. They are to make the ephod of gold, blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, and it should be embroidered. It is to have two shoulder pieces that are joined at the two top edges. The woven belt, which is attached to the ephod for tying it securely in position, should be of the same materials, gold, blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. You are to take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six names on this one stone and six remaining names on the other stone in the order of their births. A stone engraver will, en will, will engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones as he would engrave the seal. <clears throat> then you are to have them mounted in gold settings. You are to put the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel. And Aaron must carry their names before Jehovah on his two shoulder pieces as a memorial. You are to make settings of gold and two chains of pure gold twisted like a cord, and you must attach the corded chains to the settings. You are to have an embroiderer make the breast piece of judgment. It should be made like the ephod out of gold, blue thread, purple wool, scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. It should be square when doubled, a span long, and a span wide. You should set it in mounted stones, set in it mounted stones, four rows of stones. The first row is ruby, topaz, and emerald. The second row is turquoise, sapphire, and jasper. The third row is leshem stone, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row is chrysolite, onyx, and jade. They should be mounted in settings of gold. The, set, the stones will correspond to the names of the twelve sons of Israel. Each one should be engraved like a seal, each name representing one of the twelve tribes. You are to make a, uh, wreath chains on the breastpiece like cords of pure gold. You are to make two rings of gold for the breastpiece and attach the two, two rings to the two ends of the breastpiece. You are to put the two cords of the gold through the two rings at the end of the breastpiece. You will put the two ends of the two cords through the two settings, and you must attach them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. You are to make two rings of gold and set them at the two ends of the inside cage of the breastpiece facing the ephod. You should make two more rings of gold at the front of the ephod below the two shoulder pieces close to where it is joined, above the woven belt of the ephod. The breast piece should be held in place by a blue cord, tying its rings to the rings of the ephod. 
This will keep the breast piece in place on the ephod above the woven belt. Aaron must carry the names of the sons of Israel on the breast piece of judgment over his heart when he comes into the holy as a constant memorial before Jehovah. You will put the umim and the thumim into the breast piece of judgment, and they must be over Aaron's heart when he comes before Jeho- comes in before Jehovah. And Aaron must carry the means for making judgments of the Israelites over his heart before Jehovah constantly. You are to make the sleeveless coat of the ephod entirely of blue thread. There will be an opening at the top in the middle of it. Its opening should have a border woven all around it by a loom worker. It should be like the opening of a coat of mail so that it will not be torn. You should make pomegranates of blue thread, purple wool, and scarlet material all around its hem, along with bells of gold in between them. You should alternate a bell of gold and a pomegranate, a bell of gold and a pomegranate, all around the hem of the sleeveless coat. It must be worn by Aaron so that he may minister, and the sound from it must be heard when he goes into the sanctuary before Jehovah, and when he comes out so that he will not die. You are to make a shining plate of pure gold and engrave it on it as one would engrave a seal. Holiness belongs to Jehovah. You must fasten it to the, to the turban with a blue cord, and it is to remain on the front of the turban. It will be on Aaron's forehead, and Aaron will bear responsibility when someone commits an error say, against the holy things, which the Israelites sanctify when they offer them as holy gifts. It must always remain on his forehead so that they may gain approval before Jehovah. <clears throat> You are to weave the checkered robe of fine linen, make a turban of fine linen, and make a woven sash. You will also make robes, sashes, and headgear for Aaron's sons for glory and beauty. You will clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with them, and you are to anoint them and install them and sanctify them, and they will serve as priests to me. Also, make linen shorts for them to cover their naked flesh. These are to extend from the hips to the thighs. These must be worn by Aaron and his sons when they come into the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to, uh, to, to minister and the holy place so that they may not incur guilt and die. It is a permanent statue for him and his offspring after him. Exodus 29. This is what you are to do to sanctify them to serve as priests to me. Take a young bull, two unblemished rams, unleavened bread, unleavened ring-shaped loaves mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil. You are to make them with fine wheat flour and put them in a basket and present them in the basket along with the bull and the two rams. You will present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then you are to take the garments and clothe Aaron with the robe, um, the sleeveless coat of the ephod, the ephod and the breast piece. And you are to tie the woven belt of the ephod securely around his waist. You will put the turban on his head and put the holy sign of dedication on the the turban and take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. Then bring his sons forward and clothe them with the robes and wrap the sashes around them, Aaron as well as his sons, and put on their headgear, and the priesthood will become theirs as a permanent statute. This is how you should install Aaron and his sons to serve as priests. You are now to present the bull before the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons will lay their hands on the bull's head and uh, slaughter the bull before Jehovah at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Take some of the bull's blood on your finger and put it in the horns of the altar and pour out all the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Then take all the fat that covers the intestines, the appendage on the liver, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them and burn them so that they may they smoke on the altar. But the bull's flesh and its skin and its dung, you will burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Then take the one ram and Aaron and his sons are to lay their hands on the ram's head. Cut the ram into its its pieces and wash wash its intestines and its shanks. And arrange the pieces together with its head. You must burn the entire ram, making it smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering to Jehovah, a pleasing aroma. It is an offering made by fire to Jehovah. Next, you are to take the other ram, and Aaron and his his sons 
are to lay their hands on the ram's head, slaughter the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the on Aaron's right earlobe and on his son's right earlobe and on the thumb of their right hand and the big toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood on all the sides of the altar. Then take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and spatter it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and his sons garments so that he and his garments and his sons and their garments may be holy. Then take from the ram the fat, the fat tail, the fat that covers the intestines, the appendage of the liver, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them and the right leg for it is a ram of insulation. Take also a round loaf of bread and a ring shaped loaf of oiled bread and a wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before Jehovah. You must place them all in the hands of Aaron and in the hands of his sons, and you are to wave them back and forth as a wave offering before Jehovah. Then you will take them out of their hands and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a pleasing aroma before Jehovah. It is an offering made by fire to Jehovah. Then take the breast of the ram of insulation, which is offered in behalf of Aaron, and wave it back and forth as a wave offering before Jehovah, and it will become your portion. You are to sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the leg of the sacred portion that was waved and that was taken from the ram of installation from what was offered for Aaron and for his sons. It is to become Aaron's and his sons by a permanent regulation to be carried out by the facilities um, by the Israelites, for it is a sacred portion and it will become a sacred portion to be given by the Israelites. It is their sacred portion for Jehovah from their communion sacrifices. The holy garments that belong to Aaron will be used for or used by his sons after him when he uh, when they are anointed and installed as priests. The priest from among his sons who excels him and who does him into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place will wear them for seven days. You will take the ram of installation and boil its flesh in a holy place. Aaron and his sons will eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket at the entrance of the tent of meeting. They are to eat the, uh, the things with which atonement was made to install them as priests and to sanctify them, but an unauthorized person may not eat them, for they are something holy. If any of the flesh of the... Um, installation sacrifice and the bread is left over until the morning then you must burn what is left with fire it must not be eaten for it is something holy you are to do this way to abram or aaron and his sons according to all that i have commanded you you will take seven days to instill fear in them or still them as priests you will offer the bull of the sin offering daily for an atonement and you are to purify it you will take seven days to make atonement for the uh, for the altar and you must sanctify it so that it may become a most holy altar anyone who touches the altar is to be holy this is what you will offer on the altar two one-year-old rams each day continually offer the one young ram in the morning and the other young ram at twilight a tenth part of an ephah measure of the flour mixed with a fourth of a hen of beaten oil and a drink offering of a fourth of a hen of wine will go for the first young ram. You will offer the second young ram at twilight of your pleasing aroma as a pleasing aroma, an offering made by fire to Jehovah. It is to be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before Jehovah, where I will present myself to you to speak to you there. I will present myself there to you, to the Israelites, and it will be a sanctified by my glory. I will sanctify the tent of meeting and the altar, and I will sanctify Aaron and his sons so that, uh, hold on one sec. Um, no. So that they may serve as priests to me. I will reside among the people of Israel and I will be their God. And they will certainly know that I am Jehovah, their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I may reside among them. I am Jehovah, your God. 
32, I forgot, 31. So Exodus 30. You are to make an altar as a place for burning incense. You will make it of acacia wood. It should be square, one cubit long, one cubit wide, and two cubits high. Its horns will be one piece with it. You are to overlay it with pure gold, its top surface, its sides all around, and its horns. And you are to make a gold border around it. You will also make two rings of gold for it below its border on two opposite sides. And these will hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You are to put it before the certain the curtain that is near the ark of the testimony, before the cover that is over the testimony, where I will present myself to you. Aaron will burn perfumed incense on it, availing it or making it with smoke on the altar when he maintains the lamps each morning. Also, when Aaron lights the lamps at twilight, he will burn the incense. It is a regular incense offering before Jehovah throughout your generations. You must not offer it on unauthorized incense or a burnt offering or a grain offering. And you must not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron must make atonement on its horns once a year. With some of the blood of the sin offering of the atonement, he will make atonement for it once a year throughout our, your generations. It is most holy to Jehovah. Then Jehovah said to Moses, Whenever you take a census and count the sons of Israel, each one must give a ransom for his life to Jehovah at the time of, his, of the census. This is so that no plague may be brought upon them when they are registered. This is what all those who are registered will give, a half shekel by the standard shekel of the holy place. Twenty garaz equals a shekel. A half shekel is the contribution to Jehovah. Everyone registered who is 20 years old and up will give Jehovah's contribution. The rich should not give more, and the poor should not give less than half a shekel as a contribution to Jehovah to make atonement for your lives. You are to take the silver money of the atonement from the Israelites and give it in behalf of the service of the tent of meeting, that it may serve as a remembrance before Jehovah for the Israelites to make atonement for your lives. Jehovah spoke further to Moses, saying, Make a copper basin and its stand for your washing or for washing. Then place it between the tent of meeting and the altar uh, and put water into it. Aaron and his sons will wash their hands and their feet there. <clears throat> When they go into the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to minister and to make offerings of fire and smoke to Jehovah, they will wash with water so that they do not die. They must wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. And it must serve as a permanent regulation for them, for him and his offspring throughout their generations. Jehovah continued to speak to Moses. Next, take the choicest perfumes, the 500 units of solidified myrrh and half that amount, 250 units of sweet cinnamon, 200, 250 units of sweet calamus and 500 units of cassia measured by the standard shekel of the holy place along with a hen of olive oil and then make out of it a holy anointing oil it should be skillfully blended together it is to be a holy anointing oil you are to anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony with it as well as the table and all its utensils the lampstand and its utensils the altar of incense the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You must sanctify them and they will become most holy. Anyone touching them is to be holy and you will anoint Aaron and his sons and sanctify them to serve as priests to me. You will speak to the Israelites saying, this is to continue as a holy anointing oil to me during your generations. It is not to be applied to the flesh of mankind and you must not make anything with a comp composition like it. It is something holy. It is to continue as something holy for you. Anyone who makes an ointment like it and who puts some of it on an unauthorized person must be cut off from his people. Then Jehovah said to Moses, take equal portions of these perfumes, stack the drops, anikia, perfumed galbanum, and pure incense, frankincense. Make it into an incense. The spice mixture should be skillfully blended, salted, pure, and holy. You are to pound some of it into a fine powder and put some of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I will present myself to you. It should be most holy to you. You must not make for it your own use the incense that you make with this composition. You are to regard it as something holy to Jehovah. Whoever makes any like it to enjoy its smell must be cut off from its people. Exodus 31. 
Jehovah continued to speak to Moses saying, See, I have chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I will fill him with the spirit of God, giving him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of every kind of craftsmanship, for making artistic designs, for working with gold, silver, and copper, for cutting and setting stones, and for making every kind of wood product. Moreover, to assist him, I have appointed Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, and I am putting wisdom into the heart of all those who are skillful, so that they may make everything I have commanded you the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the cover that is on it. All the equipment of the tent, the table and its utensils, the lampstands of pure gold and, and, uh, of, and all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the finely woven garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, the garments of his sons to serve as priests, the anointing oil, and the perfumed incense for the sanctuary. They will do everything I have commanded you. Jehovah said further to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, especially you are to keep my Sabbaths, for it is a sign between me and you during your generations in order that you may know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying you. You must keep the Sabbath, for it is something holy to you. Whoever profanes it must be put to death. If anyone does any work on it, then that person must be cut off from among his people. Six days work may be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest. It is something holy to Jehovah. Anyone doing work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. The Israelites must keep the Sabbath. They must observe the Sabbath during all their generations. It is a lasting covenant. It is an enduring sign between me and the people of Israel. For in six days, Jehovah made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and refreshed himself. Now, as soon as he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony tab tablets of stone written on by God's finger. Okay. Is that it? Yep. That's the Exodus AV or Bible AV nine.